Today on Hands-On Photography, we're going to look at your images from a very wide perspective. I'm talking about panoramas, folks. Stay tuned. Hands-On Photography is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass easily creates unique passwords for every site. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This is Twit. Hey folks, I'm Matt Pruitt. This is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. Hope you all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. On this podcast, I like to sit down and share with you different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor and just go over different little techniques and ideas. Because right now, during this pandemic, we have a lot of free time on our hands. Uh, That's unfortunate, but it's also a good time to help boost up your skills and heck, even learn a new skill to just further better yourself. So take advantage of these times and uh, get your learning on, if you will. Hope y'all are doing well. Uh, If this is your first time joining the podcast, uh, I appreciate you hopping on over and taking a few minutes to hit the subscribe option in your favorite podcast app. I don't care if it's on Apple Podcasts on your little fancy iPhones or if you're using a Android phone and you have Spotify and Google Podcasts, we're available there too. And if you feel like checking out my beautiful mug on YouTube, we have a YouTube option as well. Check out all of the subscription options on our website, twit.tv slash H-O-P. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands-on photography. And you'll see all of the options there. Thank you all for joining. So now let's go ahead and get started with this week's episode. All right. So we're going to take a look at panoramic photographs today. Uh, We're going to go at it a little bit differently than what most of you are used to doing. Now, I've talked about in the past that our smartphones have made photography so much easier for pretty much anybody because you can literally just pick up the, the, the camera phone and point it at your subject and hit the button. And computational photography just does so much stuff for you milliseconds before hitting that shutter and even after you've hit the shutter. It's done a really good job. I can't discredit that. Now, you have an option to do panoramic photographs inside of your smartphone. And typically what you do is you hold up your phone, go to your your panoramic panoramic menu option and just pan across as your phone is starting to take a couple different pictures. And that works fine and well, depending on the actual perspective that you're trying to get. Me personally, I like to take advantage of panoramic shots, not necessarily to get the wide, long aspect ratio of, say, a 21 to 9 aspect ratio. That tends to be really, really long on the long end, but very short on the height side of things. Sometimes I want more data. Sometimes I want it to be (laughs) wide, but I also want to get the full view from top to bottom as well. Uh, For example, what you're used to seeing, I'm going to share my screen here. This is a panoramic shot uh, that I took many, many years ago, not many many years ago, but several years ago on my one of my first visits here to San Francisco of the Golden Gate Bridge. And if you notice, the aspect ratio is pretty tight. It's a lot longer versus it is um, being tall. And that's fine. This is one of my favorite shots. It's one of the few shots that I've snapped that actually hangs on the walls here in my home. So, yeah, there's that. But again, I want some of my panoramic shots to be able to capture more data at the upper part of the screen here, like right here. And maybe not so much at the bottom, but Depending on the scene, I may want a little more data showing up at the top. Now, how do you do that? Well, you can do that with your smartphone using the little built in tools with that. But I want to use the I want to be able to get this type of effect with my DSLR. And you can do that simply by just snapping your images and using a a photo editor, in this case, Lightroom or Photoshop to stack the images together and give you that actual panoramic shot that you're that you're going for. Now, what's going to happen with this? It's going to give you a lot more data. It's going to give you a much larger file. And a lot of these pixels are going to just going to look a lot sharper because you're getting a sharp image on several different shots that you're going to collect. For me, I like to do this with, say, a street view where I have a nice wide uh, view of a bunch of different buildings. And sometimes 
I want to be able to show those those buildings in a much taller perspective as well as be in a wide perspective. But today I wasn't able to get out to a different city and see different uh, tall skyscrapers or things like that. So today's example is just going to be at a local golf course where it's pretty secluded and safe for me to go out there and shoot. So now I'm going to show you my screen here. Let's see what we'll minimize that. We're going to hop into Lightroom and you're going to see that I snapped uh, 14 different images in one sequence. Okay, so let's take a look at this first image here. This is pretty simple, but I wanted to get everything up above as well as even more information that's shown over here to the right of the frame. So if I hit image number two here, you'll notice that I have captured the, the upper part of the same set of trees here. And that's fine. When you're doing this type of practice, I highly recommend overlapping your shots because what's going to happen is going to make the AI um, be a little bit more efficient on trying to figure out how to line everything up and build your panoramic. And you don't necessarily have to do 12 shots like I did. Uh, just depends on your scene. A lot of times you can get away with this on about six shots, depending on what you're trying to shoot. So again, if you if I just scroll through this list of, of files, you notice that I'm just so slowly panning to my right and as well as um, tilting up and down a few degrees here and a few degrees there to be able to capture everything in this particular scene. OK. Even up to I went back to capture the rest of the sky and the tip tops of the trees as well, because I wanted to make sure everything was in there. So now once you've done that, Photoshop and Lightroom in particular have all of these options to synchronize your images. I highly recommend doing this inside of Lightroom versus Photoshop. I know that's very odd for me to say because Photoshop does so much with with manipulation. But in my experience, Lightroom is just it's just a lot faster and it's a, a lot more user um, intuitive in my opinion. But now, OK, so I shot this with a wide angle lens. This is with a 24 millimeter lens. Now, when you shoot with the wide angle lens, you have to take into effect the actual distortion that you're going to get from wide angle lenses. We talked about this way, way back in the day when we first started hands on photography. So I'm going to go ahead and do a correction on the lens distortion. Inside of Lightroom, there's an enable profile corrections option. I'm going to click on the first image in the stack and just tell it to enable the profile corrections. And you'll notice that the image is now flattened out and it doesn't have that bowing and vignetting that tends to happen with wide angle lenses. So now I need to apply that to all of the images in the stack. And we're just going to do a sync option. We've talked about doing that as well with batch editing here. So we're going to select all of these images, hit sync, check all of the boxes, which really doesn't matter because all I'm worried about is just the actual calibration that's found here. Hit synchronize and boom, it's done. Lightroom has synchronized the lens profile on these. So now that you got everything squared away from the actual distortion and perspective standpoint, let's highlight all of these images again, right click, and you can select photo merge. Now, again, you can go and try and do this inside of Photoshop just by going to the edit in option, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do photo merge and then go to panorama because I'm serious. Photoshop is just really, really, really slow. Okay. So now we'll click on that and then the, the AI is going to think for you and you have a bunch of different options here. Like if I click on this perspective option, it's probably not going to work because it's just not enough data for it. But it also is going to work for the cylindrical or spherical options. And if you check out the boundary warps, you're going to get a whole different perspective. So as I move this boundary warp to its highest, highest measure, you notice we start to get a little bit of bowing and curves. We don't want that. So play with that in the preview to get it to look the way you need it to look for your final composition. There's also the auto crop options. If you don't do the auto crop options, you'll see where all of the stitching starts to happen as the AI was working for you behind the scenes. But go ahead and just tell it to auto crop. And if you need it to fill in some edges, the AI will do that. But it will be a little bit slower for you on the final processing. 
And if you want to add any additional uh, post-processing, such as uh, handling exposure in the shadows and contrast, this little auto settings checkbox allows you to do that as well. I tend to turn that off because I may have something else in mind. And you can just leave this create stack unchecked. And when you hit merge, Lightroom is going to think and it'll start to process the all of the 12 images that I have, as you can see right there, and create our final uh, DNG image. All right, so after it's done thinking, you'll see the image down here in the bottom of your film strip here. So I'm gonna click on that, and you notice we now have a DNG file because it converted it all from that raw, um, the raw photo files that we submitted in, into the stack. And take a look at something else here. So let's look at this first one. Notice the resolution is listed as 6,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels. Pretty big file, it's about, you know, what, 24 megapixels? Now, with our new panel, we got a lot more data. We're talking 10,000 pixels by almost 5,500 pixels. Much bigger file, a lot more data. And when you click and zoom in on everything, even my computer is like, whoa, this is a lot of data to analyze. But notice everything is in focus. Everything is nice and sharp after doing it this way. So you're going to have some advantages and disadvantages of doing this. The first advantage is, is the, the clarity and the, the final product is going to look really good. The disadvantage is your computer better be up to snuff or it's going to weep as it's trying to process this data. <laughs> All right. So that is it for this week's episode. I wanted to share you share with you all how to do a panoramic image using your DSLR. Uh, and a lot of DSLRs have a similar feature that's built into it the way that you see it on your uh, smartphone where you just sort of hold it and, and move around as it tries to snap the images. That's fine, but I think I get a lot more control when I actually manually go in and set up the panoramic um, sequence myself because I can do a nice overlap if I need to to make sure I get everything in focus on the final image. All right, that's it for this week, folks. If you all have any other questions or feedback, feel free to share it with me uh, via email. I love the messages that I've been, been getting from you all. The email address is hop at twit.tv. Or if you want to just tag me on social media, make sure you're following me over there. As a matter of fact, follow me on Instagram at ant underscore Pruitt, as well as follow me on Twitter at ant underscore Pruitt. Thank you all so much for the tremendous support. Thank you to my man, Mr. Victor, for always making me look and sound good on this show. I really do appreciate you. Now, I want you to take some time, get your practice in, keep working on the, the flash uh, photography tutorial that we talked about a couple weeks ago, because I am going to follow up on that and see what your progress has been like as we move into the next phase of that. And also take this time to just continue to learn and um, do better and get better with things because we got a lot of free time. OK, take advantage of it. All right. So safely get on out there, create and dominate. And yes, I am still waiting on justice for Brianna Taylor. Y'all take care. See ya. Want more twit? Well, check out Smart Tech today. It's at twit.tv slash STT. It's the show where Matthew Casanelli and I cover everything there is to know about smart tech. It's automation, it's connected devices, it's smart home, it's all those goodies and so much more. We get the news, we get the latest devices, we do reviews, everything. You gotta check it out. Twit.tv slash STT for Smart Tech today.